Brian Denlinger versus Brian Denlinger. So what on earth are you talking about? You know, are you finally going crazy? Oh my no, I've I went crazy a long time ago. <laughs> uh, this is a thing I see this so many times. I just wish that you were the way you used to be. You've gone so arrogant and so angry and you're not like you used to be. You were a lot more gentle and everything else. Um, uh, well, I've always been very, you know, blunt and brutally honest with my speech, but uh, uh, was I um, less caustic, I guess, in the past or something? Well, perhaps, I guess. But uh, let me just ask you three questions out there to, to kind of explain why I've changed over the years a little bit. Okay, question number one. Has the world gotten worse in the last 10 years? Went into ministry in 2007 on YouTube in 2008. Has the world gotten worse from 2007 to 2017? That's question number one. Question number two, does the Bible say that there's going to be revival among Christians or a falling away? That's question number two. Question number three, what is God's uh, feelings towards the current condition of this world? And then kind of a question that kind of links all three of those together. Uh, what should my attitude be towards those three questions? I mean, oh, I'm just getting so bitter and everything else. and think, uh, what's, what's happening in the world? I mean, am I really supposed to look at the way the world is falling apart in the last 10 years since I've been in ministry and say, I just feel happier all the time and I just want to be more gentle and just, you know, forget about things getting worse and worse. You know, weird. But a lot of people just seem to be not really, you know, they, they don't really care what the Bible has to say about things and they don't really look at the Bible as our examples. And, uh, you, know, you know, people in the Bible, I'll say it that way as, a, as an example. Um, look at look at the ministry of Jesus Christ. You know, look at his early the early parts of his his life and things and what he's going out and he's teaching people and things like that. And after three and a half years of people rejecting and saying all kinds of things, you know, and and stuff, he's going. How long shall I be with you? How long shall I suffer you? And he, you know, he's ready to go. Three and a half years. I've been in ministry for ten. Okay. Now, the Lord had a major disadvantage over me, and that is that he could read people's thoughts. I am so thankful that I cannot read your thoughts or other people's thoughts out there in the world. You talk about a nightmare. I mean, what the Lord had to put up with for three and a half years, we can't even fathom. Um, he had to go through some really bad stuff. I'm nowhere even near to the, to the Lord's level, obviously. But am I not supposed to follow Jesus Christ? Am I not supposed to look to him as an example? Yeah, I'm supposed to. Well, then am I going to get more um, judgmental as time goes by or less? I mean, as the Lord shows me more and more about how wicked this world is, is it supposed to make me more positive and friendly or more judging the wickedness of the lost world? If I'm supposed to follow Jesus Christ, I think I'm going to be doing that. Okay? How about Paul? Paul, also given as an example for us. Well, again, look at his first letters to the Corinthians, to you know the Thessalonians, to Timothy. And then look at the second time he writes to them. There's a lot more rebuking. Let me just show you a little bit of this. 2 Corinthians... Just going to, we're not going to, this isn't going to be a big, huge study. I just wanted to say this because I, I see it so much. I'm just going to, I thought I'll just put a little video together and I'm going to give it a big offer at the end that you can't refuse. Second Corinthians chapter 13, verse five, examine yourselves, whether ye be in the faith, prove your own selves. Know ye not your own selves, how that Jesus Christ is in you, except ye be reprobates. It's questioning their salvation. Well, Paul, why would you do a thing like that? And you go through, you know, the whole way through here, you know, chapter 11, but I fear lest being, verse 3, 
But I fear lest by any means as the serpent beguiled Eve through his subtlety, so your minds should be corrupted from the simplicity that is in Christ. For if he that cometh preacheth another Jesus, whom we have not preached, or if ye receive another spirit, which we ye have not received, or another gospel, which ye have not accepted, ye might well bear with him. Doesn't sound like he had much faith in the Corinthians. And for good reason. Just incredible. First Thessalonians, then you go to Second Thessalonians. You can, I mean, you can do the big study on this, but um, you know, Second Thessalonians. Uh, see which verse I could read here. Chapter two. We'll just go there. Um, now we beseech you, brethren, by the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ and by our gathering together unto Him, that ye be not soon shaken in mind or be troubled, neither by spirit nor by word nor by letter, as from us, as that the day of Christ is at hand. Now, the Thessalonians were not being bad and carnal like the Corinthians, but the point is they were getting shaken up by false people talking about false prophecy type of stuff, almost like the false rapture date-setting movement. And I've seen this thing. I mean, it's just, it's incredible. This false rapture date-setting and the people get all hyped up and then it, bam, and then they crash and all hyped up and then, bam, they crash again. You know, that's what was happening to the Thessalonians. And Paul rebukes them. Hmm. Sounds like he's getting more negative over the years, you know? How dare he? Isn't that terrible? Um, 2 Timothy chapter 1, verse 6 and 7. Wherefore I put thee in remembrance that thou stir up the gift of God which is in thee by the putting on of my hands. For God hath not given us the spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. Read verse 8 too. Be not thou therefore ashamed of the testimony of our Lord, nor of me his prisoner, but be thou partaker of the afflictions of the gospel according to the power of God. Timothy was starting to chicken out. When Paul went to prison. The people come up, hey, you're that disciple of Paul, aren't you? Oh yeah, that guy's a real crazy nut and stuff like that. Yeah. Like a lot of you start to quit on this ministry because they call you a Denlingerite. Oh, you follow Brian Denlinger. He's a cult leader. He's a this, he's a that, and everything. And you start going, um, 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 no, I, uh, no, I, I don't agree with him. And, uh, mm -hmm. and no, I'm not putting myself on Paul's level. But again, I'm supposed to follow the example of Paul. You know, did Paul get more and more gentle as time went by and less judgmental and whatever? No. <laughs> but here's the offer, okay? I'm going to make an offer to everybody out there uh, that says that I'm getting too nasty and too judgmental and everything else, okay? I'm going to go back and be a real gentle, you know, I mean, I was quite naive about a lot of things, you know, back in the past. I'll say that before I give you my offer. Um, you know, I didn't take a real, real extremely hard line stand against the whole church building thing. Because I realized there was a lot of innocent people out there that had not really heard the arguments against these things and, and stuff. And, and so I kind of took it easy. Um, there's a lot of people that I've had to turn against over the years simply because they're coming out preaching total heresy. What am I supposed to do? Just, uh, just kind of cover it up. Don't worry about it. I'm not going to do that. I'm not going to do that. There's stuff. I, I got dirt on a lot of people. Let me tell you something. And a lot of it's personal. And I'm not about to bring it out. All right? That's between them and the Lord. All right? And I'm not saying, you know, I, I know of people that are some preacher that's molesting children or something. I'm going to keep that quiet. Oh, no, 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 no. I'm talking about just struggles with the flesh and things like that. If I wanted to just rebuke people as my ministry, I could just, I could spend all day. I'm not about to do that. I go after false teachers that are trying to mess other people up. And I see, and I'll watch them for years. I don't just come right out and bam, unless they're just totally wicked and I can see that right away. I will watch people in the Bible-believing movement, I'll watch them for years sometimes before I even open my mouth about them. You know, I have a lot of grace, a lot more than people think. But here's the offer, okay? So I can keep going on and on about this, but I'm going to make you an offer. If you want me to be more gentle and kind of go back to being somewhat naive like I used to be when I first got into ministry, I, I, I knew some things, but the Lord showed me an awful lot in the last 10 years. But if you want to have me go back to that old way and be more gentle and whatever else, 
All you have to do is make the world the way it used to be 10 years ago. Then see, I won't get as worked up about things. I won't get angry and stuff like that. I won't be yelling and, and things. I'll just make it go back the way it was 10 years ago, and I'll go back to being like I was 10 years ago. Okay? What an offer. Isn't that nice? You know? See, I'm reasonable. You know? <laughs> um, if you love the truth, yeah, it cracks me up too. You know, I'll see people in the comments, they'll say, nobody's listening to you anymore. You're finished. You're about finished. I see this thing a lot and I'm going, okay, you know, uh, I'm about finished. Really, that's, that's news to me. I wasn't aware of that. Um, and of course, you know, there could be some of these people could be, you know, goons or whatever else. And they're, when they say I'm about finished, they are talking about a possible plans to shut my channel down. I'm very much aware of that. Uh, I know that that's very much desired. You know, I'm, I've seen quite a few people that'll, you know, rebuke me, but they won't dare name my name and things like this. And, and uh, you know, people send me stuff. Oh, he's talking about you. Yeah, I know. I know. You know, whatever. Um, but, you know, behind everything that I do is charity. Uh, as the Bible tells me, 1 Corinthians chapter 13. That's the motivation for this ministry. King James Video Ministries got started. This isn't just some YouTube channel. I actually have a real website. I actually have... You know, I've been in ministry longer than the YouTube thing. Um, King James Video Ministry started originally to tell people about the Word of God and go after these new versions because I saw how they deceive people, how they get people into a position where you're basically taught not to believe that the book you hold in your hands is God's Word. That's the philosophy of the new versions. I started there. I got into the rapture issue, and then it was just like people are going, I'm not being taught in my church that I'm going to could you please teach us things and you know there's stuff I have come out and uh, had to correct over the years uh, errors that I've made and, and things that I've just repeated just because it's what I was taught back during my you know many years of study and you know you start reading the Bible and you go wait a second Ugh. or you get somebody that actually comes and says hey brother you're wrong on whatever the subject is and I've had to come out and say, oh, man, I'm sorry, I'm wrong. And when I'm shown clearly, hey, you're wrong, and it's just like, whoa, okay, yeah, that's really, really bad. You know, the, the, I did a video years ago about the middle verse in the Bible, and, and uh, it's in Psalms, but I, I don't remember which one it is here. Is it Psalm 118 or something? Yeah, Psalm 118, verse 8. And, uh, you know, this is the middle verse. And... Um, Ruckman taught that, and that's I picked it up. I was like, wow, that's really good. That's really profound, and I did a whole video on this. And later on, it was like, actually, no, it's a Psalm 103, verses 1 and 2, is the real two middle verses in the Bible, if you split the Bible completely in half. And I actually did that, you know, and Ruckman said, oh, you know, um, it's because we have computers now, we can be more accurate. No, I actually spent a, a whole day <laughs> uh, counting how many verses are in the Bible. It doesn't sound, you know, it sounds like, whoa. But, you know, you just go to the end of each chapter or the end of each psalm and you look and it says 19 there and and over here it's 29 and here it's, uh, you know, see. And I, you know, added it all up and I split it in half and, oh, yep, confirmed Psalm 103 verses 1 and 2. And when I did that, I came out and I made a video stating that I was wrong. I've been wrong over the years teaching that there's going to be a peace treaty between the Jews and the Arabs. I've been repeating it without even really looking at it and saying, no, he confirms the covenant. It doesn't say anything at all about Arabs. You know, the, the Antichrist, when he comes, Daniel 9, verse 27, he confirms the covenant. Okay? Uh, not a word about Muslims. And not a word about a peace treaty. He's confirming a covenant. You know, um, the thing of rebuilding the temple, I was wrong on that. I, was, uh, I remember a while back, uh, Greg Miller had a video about um, the false prophet comes after the Antichrist shows up. And I was like, no, because I've been teaching that the false prophet comes first. And then he, you know, reveals the Antichrist. And it's like, that's not what the Bible teaches. And I had to come, you know, at first I was really skeptical and I looked at it and I'm like, oh no, I've been teaching wrong. So, you know, it's not that I'm some arrogant guy and whatever else that I've just always, 
you know, done my thing and whatever else and I'm not correctable. I've, I've had to correct myself many times and I've done it on video. I don't kind of quietly hide it and whatever else. I don't do that. Um, I am what I am. Uh, this ministry has existed all this time because God has kept it going. Um, we brought out a lot of very, very controversial things and we've made quite a few enemies. And, um, but we made some real good friends too. You're out there and I appreciate you. All my different brothers and sisters in Christ out there. And, uh, you know, I know that there's even lost people that, that uh, have spoken very kindly to me and, and things and, and said that they don't agree with me, but they appreciate the, the real spirit which is here in this ministry. Um, and I appreciate that. I really do. So, uh, this, you know, I, I've changed. Yes, I have changed over the last 10 years, but it's because the Lord showed me more from this book and, you know, things I'd never seen before. And the Lord showed me more about this world. And this world gets worse and worse as time goes by. I mean, if you're living in some little fantasy world where you go to the store and you get your little snacks or get fast food and you come home and you watch the evening news and you just have kind of a happy little world that you live in, uh, that's not the world where I live. The world where I live is dealing with people who have sickness, dealing with families that have had children taken from them, grandparents that aren't allowed to see their grandchildren, wives that live in fear of their husbands because their husbands are alcoholic, drug addict, you know, you know, and threaten their life. Um, you know, children that have been molested, people that have been put through mind control. Uh, that's the world I live in. And if you think that that's just going to make me just, uh, you know, just a lot, a lot positive and whatever else, um, you're watching the wrong channel. Uh, the other thing, too, that I need to say is I believe in absolute truth. I believe that there is such a thing as absolute truth. And so I'm not going to be vague or ambiguous. Um, you know, I came out here recently and, and uh, attacked Robert Breaker because he's a false prophet. And you look at the guy and it just over and over and over again, he's made these predictions, you know, it maybe it is September 23rd, maybe it's not. And it's, where's that ambiguity in the Bible? Where's any, anybody in the Bible saying, you know, maybe it could be, but maybe not. You're supposed to speak as one that has authority, all right? And if the Lord would ever show me you know, come to me in a vision or something like that and say, hey, the rapture is going to be on such and such date, such and such year, whatever. And I say, okay, Lord, I'm going to need to confirm this thing. You know, your word doesn't openly say this, does it? You know, I'm, I'm going to have a little go around with the Lord there and say, I don't want to put something out, Lord, unless I can prove it's from you. And this is the standard by which this ministry goes by. All right? But if the Lord ever would give me the date of the rapture, I don't think he's going to do it. I pretty much say he's definitely not going to do it because it's not in his book. But if he ever did, I'm not going to be coming out and saying, maybe, possibly, it could be, perhaps. This is the day the Lord said is going to be. That's the day. This is the time. That's the way it's going to be. You get some guy and he's going, you know, um, well, you know, I just want you to search this out for yourself. What does that mean? Send people to false prophets out there. False people that are bringing out this Revelation 12 stuff and things like that. You know, ambiguity is not the, the mark of a Bible believer. I mean, there are certainly things. There's, there's, we have liberty and things like that. Liberty issues where you can say, hey, try this uh, herbal remedy out or something like this. Or you might want to try this. Or you might, you know, that's fine. That's not a problem. But when it comes to Bible doctrine, show me where there's ambiguity in the... King James Bible, where you can say, well, maybe, it, you know, it, it could be, but I don't want to be too dogmatic on this. I mean, perhaps, but you know, especially something as important as when the Lord's coming back. So I'm going to be blunt. I'm going to be brutally honest. Um, I'm not going to be nice uh, to false prophets. Nice isn't even a King James Bible word. Um, I want people to come away from my videos. This has always been a thing. I need to say this because this, this has been one of my greatest motivations. I want people to come away from my videos knowing what I am saying to them, understanding what I'm saying. I don't want there to be any doubt. 
I'm going to speak clearly. I'm not going to be politically correct. I'm going to tell the truth and like it or lump it, it's going to come out. Okay. So that is going to be it. Um, thank you to all those that have stuck by me over the years. I really do appreciate you. Uh, you know, what more can I say? Um, just uh, please keep us in your prayers. Uh, thank you to those that have supported this ministry. And um, I guess we'll see you in the next video. I'm going to be working on Revelation 19 as soon as I'm done with this one. So uh, only a couple more chapters, chapters to go with Revelation, and then we will be done with that study. It's a really good study. I'm really enjoying it. So that's going to be it. Thank you to, for watching.